let's talk about the differences between shading something manually and shading something in a 3D environment. When shading something manually, you have total control over where the shadows fall. Generally, you will want them to imitate real lighting, but you're going to exaggerate things and simplify them and break rules in general. I believe that the control and freedom to break the rules of shading is a big part of what makes something look 2D. Now contrast that with shading in a 3D environment. Uh, well, you don't have the same level of control, do you? And that's in part a good thing. You sacrifice frame by frame control for a massive savings in man hours. Okay, so how do we add control over the shading without drastically increasing our workload? Something that can define where shadows are allowed to show up, where they are forced to, and where they are prevented from. How about a shadow mask? Or in a silly pun kind of way, a sun screen? Eh? 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 Deal with it. Behold, the sunscreen dune shader. The tune shader with a shadow mask. Also, a specular mask. Here are some samples of what you can do with this kind of control. Forcing shadows to become comic dots. What about anime hair? Yeah, it can do that. Scratched up armor? Huh? If you're interested in the setups behind these demos, um, just ask and I'll be happy to do a video about it. Okay, shadow mask is just a black and white texture. A pure black will force a shadow, a, all the grays will just influence it one way or the other, and a pure white will prevent shadows altogether. I think it's the opposite for the specular mask. It works about how you would expect. After you use it a bit, it'll just make sense. While you can create a shadow mask with texture painting, I find that texture painting in general is time consuming enough that if you can afford it, it's worth cutting out of your process, especially because I'm just one guy and in my projects, I cannot afford to be doing anything that takes me a really long time. In creating these materials, I've found that there are a handful of nodes that have proven to be particularly useful, starting with color ramp, which is worth far more than its weight in code. The next one's a Fresnel node, that's proven to be very useful, uh, followed by ambient occlusion, as in a gradient and a noise texture. A note about 3D stuff looking 2D. It's worth noting that shading is not the only variable in making stuff look 2D. Um, you have to keep in mind camera angles, light setups, your animation. You gotta keep in mind how 2D is animated and how they show movement. You've gotta emulate that in 3D, otherwise it won't, it will look out of place. You've gotta keep your animation style consistent. Anyway, that, that, that's enough said. Outlines. I will leave a link to a tutorial that goes over the method I use for getting outlines. Fair warning, it feels kind of janky. It's the best method for Eevee I can find so far. It's inconvenient enough that I'm tempted to look into coding my own outline shader for Eevee. But the current method, it yields results that look good enough, and so like, priorities. It's also worth noting that oftentimes you won't really need outlines. Especially if you've mastered contrast, it will surprise you where you won't need them. Okay, um, shortcomings. There are a few compromises I've made with Blender's node system. For example, I think that the specular color really should be at least influenced by the lights of the scene. I was not able to find a good way to do this that wouldn't involve manually adding every light in the scene into the shader itself. So that cool thing where you have the orange light on the bottom and the blue light up top, yeah, I can't do that right now. It makes me sad just a little bit. I think in the future I might experiment with Python scripts or add-ons for EV, see what I can do with code stuff, but I do have limited time so I'm not sure. How soon I'll get to that. For now though, the sunscreen tune shader and these janky outlines should be good enough for, for my needs. More videos. I will be releasing more videos on this on this channel. Yes. I have more things to say about 2D stuff. I have a project I'm working on that involves here, this character guy. So after I've done that, I'll probably be releasing stuff about how I did that. Yeah. Maybe saying it in a video is a mistake, because now you're expecting it. I will leave a download in the description with a few different materials in there. These will be good examples for you if you want to customize them, or they're good to use on their own. And yeah, so that should be there. Here's a little snippet of how you import them. It's pretty easy. You just find the blend file, click your pins, and ending. I have an art station, 
the subscription button exists. Just thought I'd let you know. And you're welcome. Do you think that's a bit too cocky? Nah, if I can't genuinely say you're welcome at the end of the video. Yep, that's my outro now. You're welcome. This video was produced and edited and everything by a person named Sean. You're welcome. Deal with it.